everyone welcome back to my channel so today I'm doing a requested video which I think is such a good video idea and it's going to be all about the fragrance wheel or fragrance family topic if you're new here then welcome welcome to my channel it's all about perfume so do subscribe if you're not already I have hundreds of perfume reviews and I have new videos every week so I'd love to have you here so what is a fragrance wheel? So you might have heard people talk about um, fragrance families, um, things like aromatic, um, oriental, fruity, floral, and the fragrance wheel is just a really sort of simple and logical way of grouping all the different types of fragrance and showing which ones are more similar, whereas which ones are like completely different and opposite. So I find it quite useful if I am trying to think of similar perfumes or quite useful just to think about what type of perfumes you might like because people tend to like one particular area and the ones nearby it. The fragrance wheel is obviously a circle as most wheels are and there are basically like four quadrants of the fragrance wheel so floral, fruity, oriental and fresh and then within them there are subcategories. So what I'm going to do is go through each subcategory, um, explain it and give an example of what I think are the best example of that type of perfume in that subcategory in the fragrance wheel, if that makes sense. So I think I'm going to start from the top and work my way round counterclockwise. So let's start with floral, probably the, the thing that people most associate with perfumes, floral perfumes, um, and of course flowers are in so many perfumes almost all of them. So within the sort of floral category, you've got floral oriental, you've got soft floral, then you've got like pure floral, and then you've got like fruity, which technically is flowery, is it? And that's fruity is moving more towards the fresh side, so it kind of sits in between fresh and floral, I think. So starting with floral oriental, so um, oriental means that there is an element of subtle spice to the perfume so a floral oriental is a flower with a, a hint of spiciness so an example of this I think is the Bulgari tuberose mystique perfume Splendida tuberose mystique I think it's now called so this has a balsamic note to it tuberose you know a flower is still the main um, smell that you get but it has this soft warm spiciness to it it doesn't feel like a fresh tuberose it feels like a warm wintry tuberose so that's my example moving on to soft floral so a soft floral is a powdery creamy floral so my example would be flower by Kenzo and um, such famous perfume this is very very powdery but it still of course does have that floral Floral, floral smell. Interestingly, it actually doesn't have a poppy fragrance note in, even though it you would think it does from the packaging. Um, it's actually like Parma violets, violets and rose. So they're the sort of dominant note, but um, they're quite creamy. I mean, Parma violet is a creamy floral anyway, but they've got a bit of a musky powderiness in here. So this is a quite a f probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous, powdery floral. So next, we just have pure like floral, just clean floral. So this is basically your true flower smell, like fresh cut flower smell, like walking into a flower shop, like picking up a bunch of flowers and smelling them. That's your true floral. So good examples of this would be J'adore from Christine Dior. This has at least five different flowers in magnolia, jasmine, you know, it's like smelling a bouquet and they put in Jador, there's a little bit of melon and fruitiness underneath which really brings out that freshness of the flowers. Another good example might be Marc Jacobs Daisy which is very violety, it doesn't have daisy in, it's violet but this also has some fresh notes in as well so it's, it's definitely more towards the fruity side um, but it is still predominantly those um, floral notes. So moving on to fruity and I think that fruity is probably my favourite of all the different 
things in the fragrance wheel. I love fruity. And fruity is something that's perhaps come um, more popular in perfume in the past like 20 years, whereas some of the ones we'll talk about later um, in the more oriental categories are more of a traditional perfume smell. So fruity, of course, is fruit. So sweet, tropical, fun. I associate fruity smells as like fun and um, uplifting. So many to choose from. I guess famous, famous fruity perfumes are the Escada summer perfumes that they bring out every year. They bring out different ones. The most successful of which is, I think, Sexy Graffiti, which is like a tropical cocktail. It has a bit of vanilla in, I think. But these all have different, all these Escada ones, there's like a cherry one, and you know, watermelon one, a raspberry one, you know, very, very fruity. Often quite young scents are very fruity because I guess they're quite an innocent smell. Um, my Jimmy Choo, my favourite perfume is uh, pear and toffee, so it's kind of like a sweet fruity. So now moving down into the bottom left quarter, the fresh fragrances. So within this we have green, we have water and we have citrus. So that green fragrance area, that is literally what it says on the tin. Smells like nature, smells like freshly mown grass, very um, fresh, uplifting green note, or sort of freshly crumbled leaves. So it's difficult to think of a pure green one. Lime Basil and Mandarin from Jo Malone has quite a lot of basil in, which gives it a very fresh feel that does have quite a lot of citrus in as well, hence the lime. But I think that's a good example of that sort of freshly mown grass green. Next we have water. So this is your sort of sea breeze, oceanic, airy, aquatic, um, watery vibe. So very, very clean and simple, fresh fragrances. So predictable example here, Dolce & Gabbana's light blue, you know, very, very uplifting and um, clean, but these ones tend to be quite difficult to find one that lasts a long time. And then next, citrus, which is probably my second favourite perfume area, maybe after some of the floral ones. This Again, a bit obvious, you know, lemon, lime, neroli, zesty, tangy. The two Tom Ford Amalfi perfumes, the neroli and the mandarino, the, you know, the, the lemony one and the orangey one. Really good examples here, as is the Aqua de Palma Blue Med range. You know, that very, very lemon, orange, citrus, fresh, fresh, fresh vibe. So now we move on to woody. Now within woody, we have aromatic. We have dry wood, we have mossy wood, and we have just clean woody. So um, aromatic kind of means what it says in the sense that it's like a sort of like an aromatherapy type smell. So often aromatic fragrances will have lavender in, herbal smells, clean herbal smells, and they will have a bit of wood in the base. So probably the most famous aromatic is Clinique Aromatics. This is such a heavy aromatic perfume. You can smell it for a million miles. I, 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 I hate aromatics, I'm so sorry. Um, so I would never wear this, but that's your best example, I think. A more modern aromatic would be Yves Saint Laurent's new Libre that they brought out, which has that lavender in, but it's much lighter than Clinique Aromatics. So moving on to dry wood, and these woody ones tend to be more of a men's um, fragrances, tend to sit around this area. So there's not as many women's ones as there are in the more floral, fruity, fresh, fragrance categories. So dry wood is your smoky wood, is your leathery suede wood. So great example is Jo Malone's bronze wood and leather. It likes you just created a scent perfect for this exact type of category. So, and I think again, this is a unisex fragrance. So it is a bit, um, like conventionally a manly smell. Might have some green notes in, um, sort of fresh cedar, but predominantly this is like a wood, smoky wood. Quite sexy, quite wintry and cozy, um, but yeah, quite um, typically masculine. Next we have mossy wood. So this is your earthy, mossy fragrances, like a woodland with moss in. Oak moss is a common fragrance note that's in these type of perfumes. An example could be Aura from Thierry Mugler, which ha which is quite mossy, and then also um, Le Panthier from Cartier. 
there's a lot of oak moss in that and gardenia musky though it does have some fruity notes in as well um like rhubarb but yeah those sort of really mossy green scents and then lastly you've just got your woody ones so cedarwood sandalwood and also vetiver would kind of fit in this category so for a woman this is really hard to find a women's perfume chloe nomad has amberwood sandalwood but it also has oak moss in so it's more towards that side but yeah this is literally just your woody ones so perhaps um this is could be an example people that like these ladies that like these might actually like wearing woody men's fragrances and then the final quadrant is oriental so we have you know moving away from woody we have woody oriental then your sort of pure oriental and then your soft oriental before we go all the way back to oriental floral so woody oriental as you'd expect is that an um, earthy woody note mixed with those oriental vibes patchouli is often in these perfumes and a good example is youth dew another classic like aromatics and another incredibly heavy perfume that i would never wear <laughs> kind of sweet spicy deep heavy woody you know these are you know oriental perfumes tend to be the best for lasting because they are very heavy in terms of an oriental pure oriental I, you guys are probably sick of me talking about it but hypnotic poison uh, from dior is a good example it's got a bit more sweetness in things like cinnamon and vanilla are the type of things you might have in a pure oriental fragrance and then lastly we have those soft orientals so an example here might be black orchid from tom ford and this is where you're going to find your incenses your warm spices um very much towards the more warmer solar end of oriental but still those notes like patchouli and vanilla will feature so i hope you found that useful um let me know which your area is what do you like or do you just like all of them i think it's quite rare to find someone that likes everything within the fragrance wheel people do tend to have a particular area that they prefer but i hope you found that useful helpful for picking your perfumes and as always links below to where you can buy what i've talked about in this video and links to my more detailed reviews of some of these as well but thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and i'll see you real soon bye